this is Rudraditya and this is the Xiaomi 11i Hypercharge and today I am going to do the full honest in-depth review of this phone. So if you are thinking to buy this phone or if you have any doubts related to this phone then you came to the right place. You clicked the right video because this video is going to be perfect for you. I am going to tell you each and everything about the phone and also I will include all the pros and cons. So yeah the video is going to be a bit longer but it will be worth watching if you are serious about this phone so i would love to start this review with one line what a great gamble all right guys so first i would love to start with the design and build quality of this phone so you will get glass sandwich design with plastic frames so that's fine at this price point i mean yeah plastic frames is okay the way they design the frame will not give you a feel like it's a plastic frame but yeah it is the design is overall very good it looks very appealing and i really like this design well i have combo green color with me although it doesn't look like you know green to me but i mean yeah it's fine overall the camera module and the design it looks very good now if we talk about the in-hand feel then it's not very comfortable but not uncomfortable phone it sits between both these things i mean it's a 204 gram phone but the width is fine not very narrow not very wide so it's fine just fine well it's a huge phone it's not a one hand phone so according to the price it will give you that premium feel not flagship stuff but yeah according to the price it feels premium in hand it looks good well i would love to talk about the biometrics although you will get an amoled panel here but still you will get a side mounted fingerprint scanner well the placement of this is perfect look if i like if my phone is on the table and if i will pick up my phone my thumb is already ready to press that fingerprint scanner and you can see that it's working absolutely fine well the response of this fingerprint scanner is very good and it's very fast well one thing i noticed that if the lock screen is on then you can just touch the fingerprint scanner to unlock it but if it's off then if you will touch then nothing will happen you have to press this like this so make the habit of pressing this because no matter if the lock screen is on or off if, if you will press it will unlock but if the screen is locked then if you will touch nothing will happen you have to press so yeah it's better to make the habit of pressing this button rather than touching i mean this sensor but yeah the placement and the performance of the side mounted fingerprint scanner on this phone is very good well guys now let's talk about the battery of this phone because definitely Xiaomi did a very good job here with amazing battery tech and it's very appreciable because big companies like Samsung and Apple you know left the battery tech they never give us a fast charging adapter or a phone which supports fast charging so I guess uh, that's a bummer but here they give 120 watt adapter and yeah, it comes inside the box as well you can see this is the adapter which uh, they use and it's 120 watt so that's really impressive well now if you're wondering that how much time it takes to charge the phone from 0 to 100 percent well in normal uh, mode it will take 21 to 22 minutes now there is boost mode in battery settings you will see boost mode you have to enable that after that you will get 120 watt supply and then it will charge the phone between 16 to 17 minutes from 0 to 100 percent so that's insane and when the boost mode is off it will charge the phone at 100 watt supply so i guess that's also fine because in summer to protect all the things and to avoid the overheat i guess Xiaomi did that i mean they will give you two options so that's nice well uh, company claims that you will get 80 percent battery health even after 800 cycles so that's very impressive if it's true so yeah i mean there is literally nothing to worry about the battery health and also there is a lot of protection features included by the company and they also got tuv rhineland safe fast charge certification so that's very cool i mean they definitely step up the battery a uh, game in the smartphone market by the way if you don't know what is tuv rhineland certification then here is the screenshot you can pause and read all right now if we talk about the performance of this phone then here you will get mediatek dimensity 925g processor and i mean in day-to-day -day task it will done the job although if you see the geekbench score then definitely it's much lower than mediatek dimensity 1200 and other snapdragon 800 series processors but i don't trust on those things like on paper it's fine yeah it's low but what matters for me is the day-to-day -day usage and in day-to-day -day usage this is fine well software is also one very important part in terms of performance and the smoothness optimization animations so i will come to the software in few seconds well if you talk about heavy usage like if you want to play games such as pubg or bgmi let's say then you can obviously play but the experience is not going to be super good 
I I will you know suggest you to go with IQ7 or OnePlus Nord 2 if you want to play heavy games. But this phone is not very good for gaming. But yeah, if you want to play casual game like half an hour, one hour PUBG, then that is also fine here. Uh, so overall, I would say that for normal users, this phone is very very good. You won't see any problem. But for very heavy usage, uh, I mean you can obviously choose other options. Alright now let's talk about the display of this phone. So as I already told you, you will get 120Hz high refresh rate and 6.67 inch AMOLED panel with 1200 nits peak brightness. You will also get HDR10 plus and Widevine L1 certification and Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection as well with 360 degree ambient light sensor which means it will you know adapt the uh, you know warm tone or cool tone according to the surrounding lightings. So that's very cool. Now if you talk about the display then it's very good. Even in direct sunlight the outdoor visibility is very good generally which i don't use to see in a phone under 30,000 range so yeah that's really uh, an appreciable thing here in this phone well some people you know complain about the over sharpening of the display well i haven't noticed any over sharpening in this phone yeah maybe if you play hdr content in youtube then you can see over sharpness but i don't think that there are a lot of hdr contents and also do let me know how many of you guys see hdr contents on youtube well i don't watch any HDR content so I don't think that there is any problem in the display and there is no tint issues and the viewing angles are also fine so overall in my opinion at this price point the display is fantastic and one more thing when we are talking about display we should also talk about the media consumption and media viewing experience here is excellent and thanks to this dual studio speakers well this is not just only dual studio speakers this is symmetry speakers i mean when you hold the phone like this or like this like in whatever way you want to see the display the location of this dual studio speakers will give you a very good you know feel it will feel very immersive it's not the best not the loudest but the experience which you are going to get from this phone is going to be awesome so i really like the speakers of this phone and also the media viewing experience is so good because of the very good display the display size is also very large and the studio speakers plus you will also get a headphone jack so in terms of media viewing it checked all the boxes all right guys now let's talk about the camera so you will get 108 megapixel f 1.8 samsung hm2 sensor in the primary lens then you will get 8 megapixel ultra wide with f 2.2 and you will get 120 degree field of view so that's nice then the third lens is 2 megapixel macro with f 2.4 now here are some photo samples and video samples which i clicked from this phone well, if you see the normal shots and if you suit a lot of scenery shots, then it's fine. The colors are good, although the consistency between the primary and ultra wide sensor is not good. But overall, the dynamic range and the colors are decent. Although you can see there is, you know, digital zoom up to 10x and don't use 10x because definitely it is not useful. But 2x and 4x zoom is, you know, acceptable in very good lighting condition. Like in daylight, you can see up to 4x, it's fine. But anything more than that, it's not that good so i won't recommend that but when it comes to human skin tones i mean it really messed up the human skin tones it feels like while painting and i don't know that what's wrong with Xiaomi's image processing all right guys so i'm pretty much sure that you guys are not impressed with the photo samples which i just showed you well here is the solution not 100 percent but at least you can improve your photos by installing gcam yes you will get camera 2 api support in the xiaomi 11i hypercharge so you can obviously install gcam but in my opinion gcam will only fix the front facing camera the rear camera is still like sometimes it's good but sometimes the stock camera feels good but one more thing to note that this phone is new and also the processor which used in this phone is also new so definitely developer needs more time to you know make a proper gcam for this phone but with time definitely they will and you have to keep on you know playing with the settings and different versions to find the stable and the best gcam for you like the gcam version 7.3 which i am using right now i mean i'm not able to shoot night shots in that and also there is no ultra wide sensor i mean option of ultra wide to shoot so yeah that's the thing but definitely i believe that after some time the developers will build a proper gcam version which you can use to improve the camera quality on this phone all right now these are some side by side photo samples and comparison of a stock and gcam camera so see the overall color reproduction of the stock camera and the human skin tones of gcam is really the combination we need here in 11i hypercharge but when it comes to selfie i mean definitely hands down the gcam is better than the stock camera but 
as I said that hopefully we can get a better Gcam version in the upcoming time. Now let's talk about the MIUI. So see last time when I used a phone with MIUI was the Redmi K20 Pro. After that, I mean in short, I'm using MIUI after a long time and I guess MIUI is improving but there is still not there is no need of optimization anymore. I mean the software of this phone is very well optimized but the thing is that there is still need of a lot of implementations. Well for example, the dark mode is still not good especially in Twitter. I see a weird problem and Amazon also looks terrible in dark mode. I mean when you enable the system dark mode then you won't get complete dark mode in some apps by default. For example, you will see grey color instead of dark in Twitter. So you have to turn on the dark mode manually in some apps to get true blacks. As you can see the difference. But if you turn off the dark mode, then you will see grey color, not white, which is very annoying. For example, I don't want to use Twitter in dark mode. But if I enable the system dark mode, then I have to use it anywhere. Well, after the irritation of 10 continuous minutes, I got a solution. Well, for the fix, you have to go into settings dark mode then more dark mode options and then you will see apps list from there if you deselect the app like here i will do this with twitter and now if i will turn off dark mode of twitter then it will work so it's a lengthy process but at least there is an option but oh this is just me ui thanks another glitch which i found that if you play youtube video in 2160p then if you try to operate notification panel while watching the video you will see lags but at lower resolution it works fine well this is very very funny i mean that notification panel lags in 2160p but at 1080p 720p that notification panel works absolutely fine again just me ui things well one more last thing which i want to share about me ui is that the separation of quick toggle and notification panel which is highly inspired from apple i mean if you swipe from the top right then you will see quick toggle and if you swipe from top middle to left then you can see your notifications but it feels annoying to me although after bringing that notification or quick toggle you can swipe between them to you know immediately switch which is definitely one step more than ios and also that's good but still why the suppression why the need of that suppression just give us all the things in one piece so see still software needs a lot of implementation i would say not optimization because as i said this software is well optimized the animations the smoothness is there it's very good it's feel it feels good but the thing is that if you want to make the software more user friendly then implement it better right well i hope that with me ui 13 things will get better Fingers crossed. Well, before moving ahead, I would like to add one more thing that in Mi 11 Lite any 5G, which also comes at the same price point as the Hypercharge, will get three years of major Android updates and four years of security patches, which is really appreciable for a mid-range phone. But there is no such promise for the Hypercharge as of now. Well, if company will announce anything for Hypercharge, I will definitely update you on my Twitter. So make sure to follow me there. Now let's talk about the Rudra's extra. So talking about the haptic feedback, you know, when you subscribe or when you type anything, you will get a very good haptic feedback. I mean, considering the price, it's very decent. And yeah, if you are watching, I mean, if you are still watching my video and if you haven't subscribed yet, then come on, just do it already, man. And also tap the bell icon, select all to get all the notifications of my future videos. Well, if I talk about the earpiece quality, then yeah, earpiece quality is very good, very solid. And the proximity sensor is also working absolutely fine because a lot of people asked me that how is the proximity sensor in this phone? Yeah, then that's working absolutely fine. Well, you will get 3.5 mm jack. As I already told you, you will also get IR blaster and there is carrier aggregation support as well. So all these things are checked. You will also get eight 5G bands here in this phone. So this is a future proof phone no doubt about that well you will also get pre-applied screen protector and a case which is actually very good i will show you in the b-rolls i don't have at the moment with me so yeah pre-applied case which is also of a decent quality and last but not the least you will also get ip53 dust and splash resistance here in this phone now let's talk about the variant. So you will get three variants, 6128, which starts at 27,000 rupees, then 8128 and 8256. We'll see, storage should not be an issue here because you will get a micro SD card slot. I mean, you can use two SIMs or one SIM and one micro SD card at a time, but again, at least you will get an option of micro SD card slot. So thumbs up, Xiaomi. And uh, 6 GB RAM and 8 GB RAM. So you will maximum get 8 GB RAM in all, in, even in the top variants. So I guess 6 GB is also fine. If you are a normal user, there is no need to go for 8 GB RAM variant. So I guess base variant makes a lot of sense. Definitely more than the other two. 
talking about the color then i have the camo green with me other than that you will get steel black purple mist and pacific pearl now let's talk about my final verdict see you will get this phone i'm in the base model at 27000 and maybe after card discounts you will get this for 24 25000 rupees but at the same price you will get Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite any 5G as well that's why in the starting of the video i said what a great gamble Xiaomi i mean they have their own rivals at the same price point wow so yeah if you are you know want to spend 25 26000 rupee on a Xiaomi phone then better go with Xiaomi 11 Lite any 5G and if you are really liking this phone So it's better to skip this one and buy the Xiaomi 11i, which comes at uh, 21,500 rupees after card offers. SBI card discount is there, and you know with 5,000 plus mAh battery and 67 watt charger, which is slightly slower than this one, is a very good option at 21,500 rupees. It's a no-brainer. So better go with that phone. So overall, this phone doesn't make any sense in today's market. But yeah, Xiaomi launched this phone just for the sake of. 120 watt but yeah that's technology is very good i'm not saying that the technology is a gimmick or something 120 watt charging is very good and also with those type of you know charging uh, and protection tech it's really appreciable but that's why the price is higher of course it's a new tech so it is going to be expensive but if you are okay with a 30 35 minute charging speed from 0 to 100% then that 67 watt charger of Mi 11i is going to do the same thing for you it's better to go with the Mi 11i well that's my review of the Xiaomi 11i hypercharge i hope you guys like this video if you then of course like this video and share this video with your friends and please subscribe to my channel i'm saying this for the second time subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you very soon in my next video until then bye bye take care